So now that we've agreed that this is a great way to represent both positive and um, both positive and negative numbers, right? There are many good properties here. We've seen that uh, this is kind of fair because half the numbers are positive or zero, and the and, and the remaining half are negative numbers. We've also seen that it's very easy for the hardware to distinguish whether a number is positive or negative. All I have to do is look at the most significant bit. We've also seen that the math works out, right? So this has several very nice properties. Okay, let me go through a few more properties of this representation. So a natural question is, you know, how do I represent the number, let's say, minus 3? So I know how to represent the number 3, right? That comes to me very naturally. I know that a 1 and a 1 gives me a 3, right? So this is my representation for 3. Now, how do I represent minus 3? Okay, so in order to figure that out, let's go through a couple of equations at first. Let's take the number 3. You know, just, just let's stick with our example and let's take the number 3. Let's just invert all the bits for fun. Okay, let's call this the number x. And x bar is x but with all the bits inverted. Okay, if I were to add these two, I know that, I, that for sure I'm going to get the sum that is, you know, all ones. Because I'm basically adding a binary digit and its inverse. Right, so I will be adding a 1 and a 0, so I will produce the result all ones. And we know that all ones is minus 1. Right, so I get this equation x plus x bar, or x prime is what I kind of wrote in this, in this, in, on these slides over here. So x plus x bar is always minus one. If I just kind of move things around and I bring x to this side, so it, it would be minus x equals x bar plus one. So that tells me that if I want the representation for minus three, all I have to do is invert all the bits and add a 1. Okay, so the representation, so if this is 3, the representation for minus 3 would be first, you know, let's do 3 bar, which is a string of 1s, and these two bits inverted, and then I have to add a 1 to it. So 3 bar plus 1 should give me minus 3, and that's basically a string of 1s, and then finally a 0 and a 1, right? So that would be the representation for minus 3. Okay, and so this notation is also referred to as the two's complement notation. Okay, so this this representation that I showed you over here, or this number over here, is the two's complement rep representation for the number minus three. So let's go through one more example just to make sure that this is grounded. So let's find the representations for five, minus five, and minus six. So five is easy, right? It's one, zero, one, and then a bunch of leading zeros. And so minus five, I have to first flip the bits and then add a one. So it becomes, so flipping the bits gives me a bunch of ones, gives me a zero, gives me a one, gives me a zero, right? So this is five. This is five bar, that is all the bits of five inverted. And then five bar plus one should give me minus six. So that would be a bunch of leading ones and then a 0, 1, 1. So that would be the representation for minus 6. Oh, not minus 6, of course, this is minus 5. Okay, so to get minus 5, I take 5, invert all the bits, add a 1, and that's how I get the representation for minus 5. Now, how do I compute minus 6? There are many different ways to do it. One is we go back to the equation I had before, where I said that x plus x bar gives me minus 1. Okay, so x bar is minus 1 minus x. Okay, so if I know 5, putting minus 5 over, putting x equals 5 over here, I would get that x bar is nothing but minus 6. Right, so this x bar over here is nothing but minus 6. Okay, so this is like a shortcut way of figuring out what minus 6 is. There are, of course, other alternative ways. You could take minus 5 over here and add minus 1 to it, right? So you would just add a bunch of 1s over here. And if you do the math, you'll see that it turns out to be exactly this one over here. Okay, so, and then you can do other kinds of math to figure it out as well, right? You could also just say, well, let me just start with 6, invert all the bits, add a 1, that'll give me minus 6, right? So there are many different ways to get the result, minus 6. 
and I just kind of showed you, you know, one shorthand way of figuring that out. Okay, so the answers are kind of spelt out over here.